Pylons. <laughs> Colin Lane. No, you're a corner. You're a wide receiver. I actually tried out for this for this arena team a couple months ago. It went poorly, as you would probably guess, for someone who never played. You probably go poorly for me this time. For real. I got you on that one. T talk a little bit about your team, man. You know, we're uh, we're off to an 0-3 start, but we are just so close. We're right there. Uh, we, we competed against uh, Lee Summit and Stanley High School our first two weeks and let one get away on Friday night but against North Kansas City. But, you know, we're in every game. We're playing hard. The kids have been working really hard since January. And, uh, you know, we're right there. We're waiting for that next step. Who do you guys have next? We have William Crispin this Friday night at uh, the Independence uh, Activities Center, which is at William Crispin High School. Okay. All right. Coach, Coach, and you say that you guys were this close to turning that leaf in, and, and I'm sure it's right there where you, where the guys, they can see or taste, you know, that, that victory. What is it that you think is that turning point of that, the, that the team needs or that they're missing to turn that page to get on the winning power? It's really, and we've talked a lot about this, and the kids would all agree with me when I say it. It's just taking that step, mm -hmm. being there, playing in the moment, if that's taking a deep breath in between plays, if that's, you know, in the huddle, thinking to yourself, I deserve to be here. Mm -hmm. I'm ready for this step. And just let it happen. Right. And don't don't be afraid of it. Accept it because it's there and you work hard for it. Right. And when it happens, be proud of it. Know it. Don't let anybody take it away from you. I, I think you ought to take the approach like one of my high school co coaches took. It wasn't the head coach. He was like the DB coach. He was the biggest coach on the field. He cut out a two by four and molded it to his hand. And every time we did something or didn't do something, we got blessed with the two by four. Now I know that's a little bit extreme. That's just me having a little fun. But you know, it's it, I, I know it is the, the turning point. And, and these young men, I know they want to. I know they want to win. You can see how serious they are. They like they're ready to play right now. Like Eddie, if you put a suit on right now, we'll run over you. <laughs> But, but these guys, at, at some point, and I'm sure there's you know one or two leaders that are in the locker room that are stepping up, that are saying these are the things that need to change. And I'm speaking to these guys right now that there needs to be one or two guys, if not all the guys in the locker room, where somebody say, enough is enough. Coach has given us the tools that we need to win. We need to win. We need to figure it out as a football team. Don't always depend on coach for the winning attitude in the locker room. And I know you guys know that already. And that's just me prophetically thinking and knowing what a football team should be. Don't put it all on the coach's hands. Even though he's a head coach, a lot will fall on it. But guys, step up in the locker room, be men, young men I should say, because I'm an old guy, I'm 40 years old. Be Real young men in the locker room. And uh, you guys stand up for what you believe in, listen to what coaches tell you, and sooner than you think, winning column will happen, brother. And once you get a taste of victory, it's sweet, man. You don't ever want to let it go. Yeah, I appreciate that. And that, that just speaks volumes. <laughs> They've heard exactly that. And, and you know, and that's the way it should be. You know, with, with young men that are coming up, they don't always get it. And uh, if there is maybe one thing, even now, for these guys, they have to listen now, they stand behind you. And if they don't listen, you'll run their behinds, you know, off tomorrow. You, they, we used to run till we threw up in trash cans, so you guys better be listening. One thing for that turning point, Coach, that, that the young men really need and look for, and maybe they haven't heard it yet, if, if you could tell them one thing to help them be better men, not on the football field, but off the football field, what would that one thing be and be a consistent message that you send to them or that they need to hear right now? What we always try to tell the kids is there's one thing that can't be coached or taught, and that's effort. And if you put effort in everything that you do, then you'll see success. And we ask them to put the same effort in the classroom and in the hallways of Raytown High as they do out on the on the football field, and we really don't stand for much excuses. You know, if, if we have a kid who's struggling in a math class, you know, but he's perfect on the football field, mm -hmm. you can be perfect as well. Right. And, and so it's just, it's effort, it's coachability, it's teachability, because coaching is teaching, teaching is coaching. Right. Well, maybe I need to be the guy to come out and mold a two by four to my hand, you know, then you guys can't get in trouble. 
<laughs> Maybe. I do see a right down school board member in the halls. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't say it. Yes, he did. did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Eddie makes football sound miserable. Two by fours run into your throat. Nothing about that sounds fun. I, I don't know. You were talking about goosebumps. I got goosebumps listening to him talk. I'm, I'm fired up. Well, I made it as far as I did by the grace of God, but I turned out all right. I you did? like to think. I've been hit in the head a few times, you can tell. But that's just part of the game, bro. That's, that's the part of the game you have to love. And uh, these guys, I know they understand that. And uh, I just want to say, man, I wish you guys the best of luck this week. I'm speaking it right now. And you guys, you know, I want you to prove me right. I like to be right, at least most of the time. You guys are going to go out this Friday, and you guys are going to win. That's the winning attitude you guys have to have starting yesterday. So it's going to happen this Friday. And I want to come back to the show next week saying, I know that the Ray Tom Blue Jays, they won their game on Friday because they said it in their mind that they're going to win. I just spoke it. That's what's going to happen Friday. That's what's going to happen. That's right. Like, Eddie, get me fired up, man. I'm trying to tell you, I know I can still play. I know there's something that I can do. All right, we heard, we heard the uh, the uh, young kids fight song. What's you guys is chant? What gets you guys pumped to go play? Well, we do, uh, we do Blue Jays jumping jacks. They're pretty loud. We gotta hear it. Give me some Blue Jays jumping jacks. Yeah, you know, there's no issue. You're gonna do it. You are gonna go over there and you're gonna do some Blue Jays jumping jacks. Uh oh. She wants to do some jumping jacks too. Uh oh. Oh, Danny's gonna do some. Oh, y'all better, better go over there and do some jump jacks. <laughs> no, nothing crazy now. We don't want you to injure yourself on the floor or nothing. But if you get hurt doing the jump jack, you probably shouldn't be playing football. That's probably not the sport for you. You'd be amazed. <laughs> oh, here we go. Bring it down. Yeah! All right, now we will be going to halftime. Ladies and gentlemen, if I can get your attention over to the other side.